Recently, when I reviewed the ROG Ally, many of you said that a gaming laptop would be superior in every way. I mean, except for the portability and flex factor, I guess you're not exactly wrong. Today, I'm checking out the ASUS Tough Gaming A16 Advantage Edition to see if it can handle newest AAA titles like Starfield as well as productivity tasks. Because let's face it, many of you are buying gaming laptops for uni and creative work as well, right? At least that's what you tell your mother or wife or boss. So you can get an ASUS gaming laptop for as low as 3099 ringgit and as bangsawan as 22,000 ringgit. In Malaysia, this tough A16 comes in two flavors, both solidly in the mid-range. Both models come equipped with the Radeon RX 7600S GPU. At the lower end, which is this one at 5199 ringgit, comes with the Ryzen 7 7735HS processor and only 8GB of RAM and 512GB of Gen. 4 PCIe NVMe storage, while the more expensive model at 6499 ringgit has the Ryzen 9 with double the RAM and also an upgraded display. The default storage on this base model is barely enough in my opinion if you want to load in a few games like Starfield which will already take up 150GB uh, but there's an additional M.2 slot if you want to, well, put in another drive. These are AMD Advantage gaming laptops with CPUs and GPUs both from Team Red, so you have access to AMD tech like Smart Access Memory and Smart Access Graphics that are both turned on by default when you get the laptop. There's also something called Smart Shift Max, which is a dynamic boost algorithm that will actually allocate power towards your CPU or GPU depending on what you're doing with the laptop, like gaming or content creation. We're gonna test out how they impact this laptop's performance. So stay tuned for that. Also, yes, this laptop does have a mug switch that you need to flip on in the Armory Crate software. In terms of aesthetics, this laptop comes in either off-black or sandstorm like this one in a mostly plastic chassis except for the lid which is made of aluminum in an anodized matte finish. Branding is very subtle and they even match the color of the plastic at the bottom to the lid and this version looks like something out of Mad Max. It looks pretty cool, though I must say that it's quite fingerprint prone, so do get your microfiber cloth handy. You also get ultra slim bezels and a 90% screen to body ratio, which will give you a more immersive gaming experience. So Asus states that this laptop is tested to the MIL STD. STD. 810H which is a US military standard. I can't really attest for that, but yeah, Build quality seems sturdy, tough enough. Well, who write one? Damn hard sell at your script. Anyways, the hinge feels smooth and robust, and it passes the one finger opening test with flying colors. Also, not much flex on the keyboard with minimal screen model. In terms of size, the Tough A16 is just slightly larger than the Tough A15 at 355mm wide, 252mm deep and 26.8mm at the thickest. It also weighs 2.2 kilograms, which is not the most portable as far as gaming laptops go, but still very manageable due to the relatively small footprint. So this laptop comes with a 16 inch 16 by 10 aspect ratio 1080p screen with a 165Hz refresh rate, 7 millisecond response time and a 250 nits peak brightness which is not the brightest. I wouldn't take this anywhere near a window. Asus calls this an IPS level screen which usually means that it's a TN panel. But not your average chap ayam TN panel, okay? As you can see from the superior color accuracy from our test using our X-Rite i1 Display Pro. 99.7% sRGB and 76.5% DCI-P3 is more than enough for playing games, watching videos, and even video editing. As long as you're not working on super color crucial stuff like film or TV. Moving on to the keyboard and the first thing that you'll no doubt notice is that it doesn't have RGB. Just white backlight with three levels of brightness and three light effects. I mean I don't really care about RGB keyboards but if someone's paying more than 5,000 ringgit for a gaming laptop, it's gotta have RGB. It also doesn't have full-size arrow keys but you do get a numpad. Hello, Asus. Gaming laptop. 
Priorities where? Fortunately, the keys feel pretty tactile and decent to type with, especially because the deck has zero flex. The typing experience is pretty decent. Uh, the keys are very quiet, uh, quite tactile, but a little mushy for me. Here's a quick typing test for your reference. We also get a pretty large touchpad that is made of glass, so it's pretty smooth. Though again, the clicks are a little mushy. Next, we have the 720p HD camera, which is usable, but I probably wouldn't stream with it. This is how the webcam looks and sounds like. I used to think I was smart You made me feel so naive The way you saw me fall apart As you sunk your teeth into me Oh, that sucker thing for Now let's talk about the speakers so for gaming, you would normally prefer a V-shaped sound signature with enhanced bass to increase the impact of gunshots and explosions, while a boosted treble region will help you hear things like footsteps better. This laptop has a bright sound signature with almost no bass. It just sounds very tinny, kind of like an aluminum can. On the flip side, it does get quite loud and the mids and treble are passable so you can still use it for watching videos if you're not too picky. I.O. ports are pretty standard for a gaming laptop like this except for the lack of a card reader. There is also no Thunderbolt 4 but you do get a USB 4 Type-C port and almost all the ports are on the left so RIP left-handers. But I do appreciate the LAN port as well as full-sized HDMI. When it comes to battery life, the 90 watt hour lithium ion battery in the Tough A16 really surprised me. So you're gonna get 12 and a half hours of video playback at 50% brightness, which is Wow. I think that Smart Access Graphics, which automatically switches between the integrated graphics in the processor uh, to the RX 7600S, probably helped extend the battery life. Make sure to leave your GPU mode on standard in Armory Crate and apply Smart Access Graphics in the AMD Adrenaline software. Looking at power consumption while gaming, switching from performance to turbo profiles increases power draw by 11%. Uh, for everyday use, I'd recommend leaving it at silent or performance. When you buy this laptop, you also get two chargers, a chunky DC one and a tiny USB-C one. Both are rated at 100 watts and will charge your laptop to 50% in about 30 minutes. It's great to have a more portable option now that also charges as fast so you don't have to lug around that big old thing. Finally, let's talk about temps and noise. So the thermal design of the Tough A16 comes with six heat pipes and two fans, and it seems to handle thermal loads decently. For everyday use, it doesn't get too warm. However, it does heat up quite a bit during longer gaming sessions or if you're loading up the CPU and GPU while doing like heavier tasks like 3D rendering and video rendering and stuff like that. So if you're working or gaming with this laptop on your lap a lot, then you're going to have a pretty hot time. Though I must point out how impressed I was with how quiet it stayed, regardless of what profile I set it to, it's almost silent like this half the time. So give and take, I suppose. When you buy the Tough A16 in Malaysia, you're gonna get a free Tough backpack as well as a free 100 watt Type-C charger. Starting with synthetic benchmarks, we have 3D Mark. The AMD CPU and GPU combo here performs quite well. That new RX 7600S seems to be comparable to the older RX 6800S. Next, we have Shadow of the Benchmarker, which is an older title by now. Uh, the A16 hits 100fps on its native resolution. 
Not bad. Cyberpunk is even playable over 60 FPS on high. You can even go 1440p if you lower settings to medium. The same applies to a newer title like Resident Evil 4 Remake where the gap between 1080p and 1200p is even smaller. A less graphically demanding title like Diablo 4 will even hit 135 frames per second in 1200p. And of course, if you play Dota or Valorant, this laptop is total overkill. However, if you're going to play Starfield, which has a RAM requirement of 16GB, things aren't as good. I would personally lower settings to medium to squeeze out a few more frames, uh, but 40fps for Starfield is decently playable in my opinion. Now, because this is an AMD laptop, we're going to test out FSR 2 as well. A game like Diablo 4 totally doesn't need it, but it's going to make games like Cyberpunk play quite a bit smoother. Uh, for Starfield, on this laptop, FSR is a no-brainer. Lastly, I turned off smart access memory and graphics uh, before booting up Starfield again. And while the performance difference is not huge, it's still a good 10%. So yeah, just leave them on. Moving on to productivity benchmarks, I'm going to be brief. Uh, for pure CPU power, the Ryzen 7 in this laptop is quite powerful as seen in Cinebench. For content creation in DaVinci Resolve, this laptop is also great. But if you're more an Adobe person with Premiere Pro, the green team is still the way to go. Also, I thought the Photoshop scores were a little dodgy, so I decided to uh, upgrade the RAM to 16GB and sure enough, the numbers went up by more than double. I would definitely recommend a RAM upgrade if you're using this laptop for content creation work. Finally, for 3D work, while the Ryzen 7 is going to be great, uh, for GPU rendering, Team Green is still better. To recap, here are the pros, mess, and cons of the ASUS Tough Gaming A16 Advantage Edition. I give this laptop a hashtag cheap buy, super battery life, 8 out of 10. So what's the verdict? Well, at 5199 ringgit, this laptop will allow you to play AAA titles at its native 1200p resolution as well as with an external monitor up to 1440p pretty well. The build quality and screen is also very good, although I do wish that it was brighter. The only downside for me is that it does get quite warm, but if you're going to be using this on a desk more often than not, having the fans this quiet could make up for the temps especially if you're going to be working with this in a public space. On top of that, the excellent battery life also makes this a very portable and excellent choice for taking it out to uh, uni or work. However, I do urge that you upgrade the RAM to 16 gigabytes because some games like Starfield can be a little iffy if you only have 8 gigabytes of RAM. And it's only 1 to 200 ringgit to top up anyway, so... Also, a storage upgrade would make this a lot more usable so you don't have to carry an external drive with you. That is everything I have to say about the Tough A16. If you have any questions, do feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you find this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like and share. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell harder than you would hit alternate F4 when you rage quit. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram to see more shenanigans from the Mob House crew. Again, my name is Bang Sawan Shane, in case you didn't know. And I will see you in the next one.